Hello everyone, a very good afternoon to all. Uh, I am Priya Tapwal doing PhD under the supervision of Professor Sudeep Mishra at IIT Kharagpur uh, in Computer Science and Engineering. In this session, I am going to discuss the previous year assignment questions of the course Introduction to Internet of Things. Uh, I am going to solve the questions uh, of uh, your course and uh, apart from that, uh, this session will be interactive session as well as problem solving session. Today I am going to discuss uh, the solution of your week zero assignment. Uh, now I am going to share my screen in order to solve the questions. I hope my screen is visible to you and the first question is which of the following allows us to identify objects and extract information. Uh, the options uh, for this question uh, are RFID, sensors, actuators and IoT nodes. Uh, in order to answer this question, we should know what exactly is RFID, uh, what is sensors, what are actuators and what are IoT nodes. So I'll start with your RFID. Uh, so RFID is a wireless technology uh, where, uh, which consists of your readers and tags. A reader is a device that has one or more antennas. These antennas can emit and receive signals in order to identify the objects. Uh, your tags also emit and receive sig uh, emit signals and based on those signals the readers can identify the objects. Uh, each of your RFID tag has unique code which are identified by your RFID readers and these RFID tags are used uh, by various industries or um, are used to provide unique code to each object. So, uh, RFID technology can be used to identify uh, to provide unique identity to the objects and further these RFID readers are used to identify those uh, unique objects. Now the second one is your sensor. So sensors are the devices which detect the physical environment and further respond to the signal. Uh, in our day to day world we are using various types of sensors uh, we have seen various types of sensors uh, for example when you enter a mall the door of the mall automatically open so this is because of your motion sensor uh, the motion sensor which is present at the gate of your mall detect your movement and based on that movement it will open the door Apart from this, uh, in your mobile phone, there are various sensors used. For example, your uh, accelerometer, temperature sensor, uh, and also your touch screen. Uh, for example, in order to unlock your mobile phone, you are using your touch screen sensor in order to open that, unlock your mobile. Now, the next one is your actuators. Actuators are the devices that produce motion by converting the signal and energy going into the system. Uh, these actuators act according to the data which is received by uh, the, which is sensed by the sensor and the actuator act accordingly. Uh, for example, you can take uh, the uh, example of your um, machine. For example, uh, the sensors uh, attached to the machine Sense the data, if the uh, uh, temperature of that machine increases, then it automatically uh, stop the engine. This is uh, the stopping of engine uh, is uh, due to the actuator present at that machine. Now the next one is your IoT nodes. The various types of devices that are available in the IoT ecosystem are called your IoT nodes. 
these devices allows the connection of your physical world with the internet uh, iot nodes uh, can be um, sensors can be devices can be human being which are interacting with each other with the help of internet so these devices or these nodes are exchanging data between each other with the help of internet and in and these are interconnected with each other with the help of internet so uh, yeah uh, the correct answer for this question that which of the following allows us to identify objects and in extract information is a rfid because rfid in rfid the tags and the readers are used to identify the objects and extract information uh, the information which is present over the rfid tag Uh, the next question is how many layers does jigbee consist of and the options are 1 2 3 4 the correct answer for this question is 4 jigbee consists of four layers which are physical layer medium access layer network layer and application layer now one by one i'll tell you that what are the functionality of these layers first one is your physical layer the physical layer defines the physical operation of zigbee device uh, the the physical operations are include sensitivity channel projection chip modulation and others the second one is math layer the math layer consists of various services such as acknowledgement management transmission retry collision avoidance techniques and others also the third one is your network layer the network layer adds routing capability that allows the data packets to traverse multiple devices to route the data from the source to the destination the last layer is application layer uh, the application layer defines various addressing objects including profile clusters and endpoints Therefore, the correct answer for this question is four. Zigbee consists of four layers. The next question is, which of the following is not a component of cloud computing? Uh, options are client, local servers, services, application. Uh, before answering this question i would like to tell you what exactly is cloud computing after that i'll show you the architecture of cloud computing and the various components which are present in the uh, architecture of cloud computing after knowing the components which are present in the uh, cloud computing you will be able to answer this question so first of all what is cloud computing cloud computing is a computing paradigm that delivers computing services such as software networking databases storage over the internet now i'll show you the basic architecture of your cloud computing i'm uh, opening my whiteboard in order to show you first of all i'll show you that um, what exactly is cloud computing the basic architecture so this is your cloud this is your here's your end devices various side end devices it can be your mobile phone it can be your laptop anything cloud which consists of which will provide you various services 
and these are interconnected with each other with the help of internet so this will act as the back end and this will act as front end this end devices uh, can interact with your cloud with the help of internet and uh, uh, it uses client interface in order to uh, access the services which are provided by our cloud now i'll show you what exactly this front end consists of and your back end consists of so basically this is your front end let's assume so fr in front end uh, there will be a client interface with the help of which your end devices are going to access the services which are provided by your back end so this is your front end basically now this front end is interconnected to your back end with the help of as i have already told internet now with the help of internet this front end can access the services which are provided by our cloud or the components of cloud so show you the basic components majorly there are seven components first one is your application various applications which are provided by your cloud the second one is your services uh, there are three types of services that is platform as a service infrastructure as a service and storage as a service now third one is your runtime cloud your the storage which is provided by cloud in order to store your data and the fifth one is your infrastructure infrastructure right sixth one is your security one is your management the management which is provided by your cloud okay. uh, these are the various components of your cloud computing that is your client interface uh, which uh, is your front end this front end is interconnected to the back end so here it is your back end with the help of internet and this backend consists of various components these are application services front end cloud storage infrastructure security and management now the question was which of the following is not a component of your cloud computing as we saw uh, client services and application these three are the components of cloud computing however your local servers are not the component of your cloud computing so the correct answer for this question is local servers okay the next question is uh, which of the following is distance measuring sensor module options are dht22 hcsr04 tsl2591 hcsr505 so the correct answer for this question is hcsr04 
this it's the sr04 is used to measure the distance uh, and um, it uses ultrasonic rays in order to measure the distance and uh, it can um, measure the distance between the range of 2 cm to 450 cm apart from this your dht22 sensor is a digital sensor which is used to measure the humidity as well as temperature however your tsl2591 is a light sensor uh, which is a mini infrared motion sensor uh, and it is based on your infrared technology uh the next question that is your question number 5 uh is which of the following is a component of typical sensor network and the options are sink gateway router and all of these in order to answer this question we should know the uh, architecture of typical sensor network so i am again using my whiteboard in order to show you the architecture of uh, your sensor network so let's consider that this is your sensor network which consists of various sensors so i am using cross sign in order to show uh, the sensors the various sensors which are present in the network basically a sensor but the functionality of this sync node is to receive the information from these sensors and transmit the same to the outside world and further this is interconnected to gateway of various routers which are used to route the data to the destination node let's assume this is your destination and this sensor is your source node right like so here this is your source this is your sink let me write to avoid any confusion Uh, let's assume that this source node want to send data to this or uh, uh, destination node this is your router okay so basically first uh, this sensor will send data to sync node uh, by using the protocol which are, there are various protocols uh, which are used in wireless sensor networks you can go through the, those protocol so the sensor node will use one of the protocol in order to transmit the data to the sink and also uh, to select the sink so you can go through those protocols and after that this sink node will um, transmit the data to the gateway this gateway is used to interconnect two different uh, networks so uh, further this gateway transmit the data to the Uh, outside network um, uh, which consists of various routers these router use the information which are present in their routing tables in order to route the data to the destination so this router will use the information from here to gateway data will come to the gateway and from here to the router so this router will use the information which is present in its routing table and further uh, let's assume send to r2 and this uh, router again use the information that is present in its routing table and further route the data to the particular destination so as we can see that uh, there are the various components of uh, typical sensor networks are sensors various types of sensor the sync node gateway routers and destination obviously destination can be any device 
so uh, the answer for this question will be all of these because sink gateway router all those three are, uh, are present in the um, architecture of your uh, sensor network now the next question is which of the following sensors are responsible for measuring orientation and angular velocity and the options are accelerometer gps temperature none of these um, first one is your accelerometer so accelerometer is a sensor which is used to measure the acceleration as we know that acceleration is a vector quantity so it has direction as well so accelerometer in order to measure that direction also so accelerometer give three values that is along your x axis y axis and z axis um, and next one is your gps gps is a satellite based navigation system which is used to provide the position which is used for positioning and uh, the next one that is third one is your temperature sensor as the name suggests it is used to uh, measure the temperature it can be analog as well as digital uh, the analog sensor will give continuous range of values of the temperature however digital temperature sensor will only give digital value of the um, sensor for example in the form of 1 or 0 for example uh dht uh, your dht 22 sensor is your digital sensor which is used to give the digital values of your uh, humidity as well as your temperature so the correct answer for this question is none of these as uh, none of your accelerometer gps and temperature sensor are responsible for measuring the orientation and your angular velocity Yeah. Next one is ISA hundred point eleven A is a wireless network technology standard. This is a statement given, and uh, in this question we have to tell that what exactly ISA stand for. The options are International Society of Automation, International Society of Advancement, Inter uh, Industrial Society of Automation, and Industrial Society of Advancement. so the correct option is international society of automation uh, this isa is a non profit organization of engineers industrial partners scientists uh, which uh, which is responsible for the automation of your industries the next question is which of the following is not a difference between traditional data center and cloud computing So in order to answer this question we should know the differences between your traditional data center and the cloud computing so what are the feature what are the additional feature that cloud computing provide us over your traditional data center so both your uh, traditional data center as well as cloud computing provide us storage but apart from storage your cloud computing also provide us various um, functionalities such as uh, such as uh, scalability automation flexibility elasticity running tasks and security whereas your traditional data center uh, centers do not offers these features however both of your traditional data center as well as cloud computing provide storage so the correct answer for this question is storage as both your traditional data center and cloud computing provide storage however your cloud computing um, offers scalability flexibility and elasticity in addition to storage uh, the next question is smart grid is also known as energy internet uh, so we have to tell whether this statement is true or false so uh, the statement is true because smart grid is uh, used to provide energy with the, uh, over the internet so therefore uh, the smart con uh, grids are also known as energy internet uh, so this statement is true as you can see uh, now the next question and the last question is can a point of no failure result in partition of network in stationary sensor network so we have to tell whether this statement is correct or not whether the point failure point of not failure result in the partition of network in stationary sensor network or not so uh, the answer for this question is yes 
इन केस ऑफ स्टेशनरी सेंसर नेटवर्क इफ अ नोट फेल्स देन दिस विल रिजल्ट इन द पार्टीशन ऑफ द नेटवर्क सो दिस इज योर असाइनमेंट नंबर जीरो and in the uh, assignment for week 0 and uh, in this uh, session we have discussed all the 10 questions which were given in your week 0 assignment uh, and uh, next week we are going to uh, cover the solutions of your week 1 assignment and now i am closing this session for now